welcome to the Ladies Talk Show. We are in chapter five. We made it. We made it. Yay. Okay. So I'm going to read just a couple of um, paragraphs or whatever, and then you guys are going to give me questions. Okay. You ready? Stay tuned. Here we go. Chapter five is called Infinite Blessing, and it's on page 95. Two cars barrel towards each other at ridiculous speeds. The screeching of tires sends a chill down the spine of every person within earshot. Then, as if giant hands come out of, came out of the sky and hold the cars apart, the crash never happens. The cars sit motionless an inch apart from each other, smoke wafting gently into the sky. The driver of one of the cars looks around for a moment, shrugs, and then takes off to her destination as if nothing happened. The other driver, a young woman in her early 30s, bursts into tears. She thought she didn't believe in God. Nonetheless, she feels herself sobbing uncontrollably and thanking him for sparing her life. God's blessing, God's blessings. We all yearn for God's blessings. <clears throat> Even when people feel very far removed from religiosity, they still want to be protected from all harm. As we see from the paragraph above, some of us recognize it when it comes to us and some of us don't. Yet most people long for his closeness and for his help in their lives. We all want to be saved when we need it the most. We want the blessings of health and wealth and joy in our marriage. We want our children to do well in their lives, for our parents to be happy and to live long, healthy, happy lives. We want to be successful in our jobs, for our worries to be alleviated and for our nation to be strengthened. The list is endless. So how do we increase Hashem's blessings in our lives? The extraordinary answer is that God himself told us exactly how to do this. If we receive his blessing well, he will give us more blessing. But what does it mean to receive his blessing well? Where exactly does this blessing come from and how do we ask, access it? You might be amazed by the answer. Believe it or not, you have your very own personal treasure chest of blessing, of blessings given to you by God himself. It's your own private dispensing system for blessings that are picked out specifically for you. And it's bring, brimming with heaps of hand-tailored blessings that are waiting to be delivered to you personally. And the more blessings you are able to receive, the more is given to you. Is this awesome? <laughs> right? Hello, this is awesome. Uh, the more blessings you are able to receive, the more is given to you and the treasure chest is replenished again and again as the blessings are given over to you. This blessing supply is always by your side, just waiting to provide you with all the riches you could ever dream of. The name of your own personal, personal treasure chest is, and there's a blank line and it says, insert your husband's name here. Are we following? <laughs> okay, the source of all blessing. And then I'm gonna, guys, get your questions ready because I'm gonna, gonna get right to the questions. The Gemara tells us that bracha that a woman has is from her husband. The bracha that a woman has is from her husband, if you're hearing me. Okay, Rav um, Tzadok HaKohen Melublin teaches us that the husband is the conduit for all blessing, meaning that bracha does not come directly to the wife. It comes only through the husband. Rav Yaakov Meir Shechter writes that the way to continue receiving bracha is by giving it to another person. When a husband gives to his wife, he causes more bracha to be provided for Hashem, by Hashem. Rabbi Nachum Sauer adds that the Shekhinah replenished that bracha when the husband gives to his wife. Our rabbis are teaching us that the flow of bracha comes from Shemayim, okay, from heaven to our husband and then to us. Our husband controls the flow of bracha and there is only one thing we can do to keep that bracha con flowing continuously and that's to fully receive our husband's blessing. The more we are able to receive, the more we will get. This is how Hashem designed the world. Sometimes my students say become confused by another Gemara that says all bracha in the home is because of the wife. This does not contradict the first Gemara, but in fact bolsters it. 
If the wife has a small capacity to receive, there is a small amount of bracha in the home. If she has a large capacity to receive, there is large amounts of bracha. She is the recipient of her husband's bracha and contains it for the home, but she is not the source of the bracha her husband is. Okay, I think that's it. Oh, no, there's another couple of paragraphs here. Rabbi Nachum Sauer explains, on a practical level, this is how it works. When your husband gives blessing to you, his hands become empty. Now he turns back to Hashem who fills, refills his hands with more blessing so he can give even more to you. This actually happens every single time that your husband gives to you, even if you can't always see it with your own eyes. What this means is that the more you are able to receive from your husband, the more God will give your husband to give to you. Our goal is to become the greatest receiver that we possibly can in order to increase the bracha that comes into our homes. So the obvious question is, if all bracha comes down from Shemayim through our husband and then to us, how do we bring more bracha down? It turns out that our answer is quite simple, by growing our ability to receive. That is what we will learn in this chapter. And it is part of our true mission, life mission in this world. Okay, questions. Very good. Let's see what you guys have for me. Okay, we have Chayla who says, why is our husband the source of all blessing? What's the purpose of our husbands being the sole conduit for bracha? Uh, hold on a sec. Uh, Hashem, uh, excuse me, can you answer? Hello, I don't know. <laughs> we don't know that why God made it this way. We don't know, but we know one thing for sure. It is guaranteed. So we don't know why he's the source of bracha and how it works and what the, de- uh, we, no, we know how it works. We don't know why it's like that. God has all the bracha since the day you set foot, since the day Adam and Chava walked the planet earth. God has in store for you personally a certain amount of bracha that is sitting up, whatever you can imagine, the Costco or uh, what do you have in your town? I don't know, uh, a huge warehouse, okay? Kmart or uh, Kmart or Walmart, whatever, huge, huge storehouse of blessings designed just for you. It's been sitting there in, for eternity since God created the world. There is bracha waiting for you. And the only way to access it is from your from Shemaim through your husband and to you. And the way that you get it from your husband is by being a larger receiver. It's a very good question. I don't know the answer. All I know is how it works and it's guaranteed to work and it works for everybody. It'll work for you too. You got to try this at home. Okay, go ahead. What's the next question? Okay, we have a question from Devorah. If my husband needs to give to me in order to get more bracha from Hashem, what should I do if he's not giving to me? Excellent question. So you have people who for 10 years, they've been married and every time their husband tries to give to them, they block it. You know, he says to them, oh, I'm going to, um, uh, here's, the, I brought the milk home. And you're like, oh, you got the wrong brand. And he says, oh, uh, yeah, beautiful, beautiful outfit you're wearing. Like, this schmata, are you crazy? Uh, he comes and he says, he says, oh, I brought you a little something. It's little apples that, you know, from this such and such a tree. And you're like, do you know how expensive those are? So your whole time, you're blocking every gift that he gives you, Right. And now it's like you can try and be a receiver. You got to train it back up and get the oil, you know, get the things working again. You've been saying no, and you haven't been a receiver for all those years. So it, it's, everyone says to me, oh, my husband's not the giving type. He doesn't give. He was born to give to you. That is what he wants to do more than anything in the world. He has more satisfaction from giving to you than anything he does in his entire life. Your job is to receive, and that's what we're going to be learning. So, good question. What's the next one? Okay, we have a question from Nahama. What if I try really hard to open to to be open to receiving bracha from my husband, but more bracha doesn't come into my home? Okay, that's a good question. So, first of all, you should just know it's guaranteed. It's like this is God guarantees from Har Sinai, you, if you receive, if your husband gives bracha, you will receive it. Now, will you see it every time? No. Let's say, you know, your, your car, 
you know, you have the bracha. You are actually going through a stop. You, you accidentally go through a stop sign and you're supposed to get in a car crash. Okay. And, you know, unfortunately that was the gazera, whatever you're supposed to get in a car crash. Your car, and you aren't going to be hurting it. Your car is just going to be all damaged up and totaled or something like that. Now you receive from your husband, more brach comes into the home. You focus on shalom bias. You focus on treating him like a king. You treat on, you treat him, you become the Azer Konegdo and you work hard and you work hard. And now you accidentally go through the stop sign and that guy sees you and stops. You definitely got the bracha. The bracha poured into you. You saved such agmas nefesh, such difficulty, such challenge, such hardship. You don't see it but it is guaranteed that it's there. So th that's a little bit of a hard answer to hear because like, wait a minute, I want to see, I, if I'm putting effort in, I want to see the results of my work. So first of all, just count on, you can guarantee God is giving you that bracha. You may not see it, but here's the thing. You're going to see a lot more than you ever did in your life. You open your eyes and you're going to realize oh, you know, this is crazy. My kid has been bad in math for forever, for like four years. Suddenly he got a new tutor and now it turned it all around. He's had a million tutors. That's called bracha in your home. And that comes from Shalom Bias. And the more you focus on Shalom Bias, the more you make your husband the top priority, the more you make this your avoda in life is taking care of your Shalom Bias, the more bracha you will have for sure. <laughs> okay, guaranteed. The more you will have, whether you see it or not, means if you're opening your eyes or not, meaning if it's a hidden bracha, like you were supposed to trip and hurt, hurt your ankle and be in, in on a cast for six weeks, but you didn't, <laughs> you know, do, do you end the day and you lie in the pillow? Oh, Thank you for, for not making me trip and get a broken ankle today. You know, we should. Maybe we should go to bed every night saying that, you know. Um, uh, but uh, but you can guarantee that every ounce of effort you put into Shalom Bias is going to come back to you a thousandfold. Guaranteed. Okay, go ahead. What's the next question? Alana, let's hear it. Okay, so this is a little bit of a follow-up to Devorah's question. It's from Figgy. Um, is there a possibility a husband just really doesn't know how to give? Does that ever happen? Of course he doesn't know how to give. No home husband knows how to give. <laughs> you got to teach him. So what happens is your husband, let's say you're receiving and he says, oh, I brought the milk home. And it's, to no, he brings the ketchup home, right? And you're like, this ketchup is like, we've been using Heinz ketchup, you know, 57 flavors or whatever, 57 varieties. I don't know, whatever, you know, we've been, that's the ketchup I like. What is this, you know, off brand, you know, Joe Schmo, whatever's, uh, you know, what, what is this? And you're so annoyed. Instead, you say, you say, oh, thank you. Thanks so much for getting the ketchup. You know, meanwhile, you squirt it down the to the, the, the sink. <laughs> no, you know, use the ketchup. And then, you know, at a later time, maybe you can, you can, uh, but what I'm saying, a woman has to, in a way, train her husband. It's not like you're trying, you know, you're, you're, he has to do everything you're saying, but I'm just saying when a woman knows what her needs are, and we just spent chapter four discussing what our needs are and really understanding that now we can express them in a different way. It could have been the reason the husband isn't, hasn't been giving and doesn't give whatever is because the woman's been demanding everything, all her wants from him, all her needs from him. And she's just like her head, his head is spinning, you know? So that's one aspect. He, she, he, he, no matter what he tries, He's not going to hit the nail on the head because she's been demanding all her wants and all her needs all at the same time. So he's just kind of lost. So that's part of the problem. The other part of the problem is maybe he's given and given and given. It hasn't been appreciated. And now he's just apathetic. It's like, why should I even bother? And even when I do try, it's never right. I never, you know, I, she asked me to bring her water. Oh, why did you use that cup? You know, everything I try to give to her is rejected. So why should I keep trying? So Usually the problem is sourced in the wife not receiving and that causes the husband not to give, not the other way around. So once a woman learns the techniques, which you're going to be learning of how to be, uh, receive properly and thank him properly and appreciate from the from deep within your soul. It's not just like a, a, a thanking to manipulate him. So we'll do it correctly next time. But it's it's a deep, deep understanding of how fortunate you are to have him in your life and how fortunate you are that God gave him to you to take care of and to watch over and for him to watch over you and to take care of you and cherish you. And so once you un once that is flowing well, then the giving is fixed. Try this at home. It's guaranteed. Okay, go ahead, Alana, next question. Okay, we have from Mindy. 
So if the bracha in the home comes through the husband, it's not coming through the wife at all? At all. <laughs> okay. So I got this question so many cat times. I've asked so many okay, so so many people I called and figured out to figure out, is that true? I mean, I asked, like, wait a second. So if the husband is doesn't work and he's sitting on the couch and he's, you know, doing nothing all day, he's playing video games or something horrible, you know. I'm not that not that that's horrible it, it, to a certain extent, but if you're doing that the entire day, it's bad. Um, so he's doing nothing and the wife has three jobs and she's feeding the kids and she's making dinner and she's doing whatever. Leah, are you telling me? Or I would say, Rabbi, are you telling me that all bracha is coming to this family from from the guy who's just sitting on the couch? Guess what, ladies? The incredible, incredible answer is yes. The source of all blessing is from the husband. There is no other way to access it. So a woman says to me, Leah, you joking. I wake up before everybody else does. I daven, I say to Hillam, I, you know, make food for the lady down the street. I spend the entire day doing mitzvahs. You're saying I'm getting no merit from it, only from my husband. And I had this answer from Rev. Usher Weiss, and he said that, yeah, yeah, of course she has a merit from it. Of course, she's making huge bricks in Shemayim. <laughs> I don't know if he said that, but I'm saying that, yeah, whatever. She, you know, she she has earning all that merit, and it's sitting up in Shemayim. But the only way that bracha comes into her home is through her husband, who is the conduit for 100% of the bracha. There is nothing. There's no bracha in your home except for what has come through your husband. So the big, if a woman is a receiver like this, you know, a teeny little receiver, whatever, she'll, that's how much bracha in her home. If she's a receiver like that, that's how much bracha is in her home. There's no limit to the amount of bracha. If she's the size of a bathtub, if she's the size of a swimming pool, if she's the size of an ocean as a receiver, that's how much will come into her home. But yes, to answer the question, 100% of all bracha only comes into the home through the husband. Okay, next question. Ouch, right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's a tough okay. one but the beautiful, yeah. what'd you say? No, it can be tough to swallow, but it's, it's also tough to power. swallow. But that's how it is. But here's the other thing. Rather than wishing and hoping Bracha would come into the house, now you know exactly what to do. Receive from your husband. And a woman, because she was a born, a man was born a giver, so he has a Yetahara to not give. And a woman is a receiver. She has a born receiver, so she has a Yetahara not to receive. She's going to look for ways to circumvent the system. Okay? Sorry. She's not. Her Neshama is not. The Yetahara is. And she's got an evil inclination that will, will try and thwart the Bracha coming into the home. Okay, go ahead. What's the next question? Okay, so um, Sarah asks, can I share this idea with my husband? Do you think it would empower him? Um, so that's a great question. Here's the problem. Let's say your husband comes and he brings you a whole bath, you know, thing of flowers. Here you go. Good Shabbos. And you're like, oh, thank you so much. And he says, yeah, the rabbi told me to give them to you. <laughs> you're like, oh, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like it takes away all the steam. It's like popping the air balloon. So this is a little bit the same way that if um, if you just go on about your business, receiving, receiving, receiving and increasing your receiving, he will grow as a giver and he will grow to adore you and love you and cherish you and, and cleave to you more than ever before. If on the other hand, you um, tell him, Oh, you know, you're the giver and I'm the receiver. So I'm going to receive. Now, every time you receive from him and say, Oh, thank you. She's going to, he's going to say, Oh, you're just doing that because you want more bracha in the house. You follow what I'm saying? It's just a little bit, it kind of, you know, takes away the, 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 your, doing it out of the goodness of your heart and out of wanting to be closer to him and makes it look a little bit more self-serving. So my advice would be, um, I wouldn't necessarily share that with your husband unless I can't imagine a good reason. Uh, 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 somebody who learns Torah all the time might already know this, um, but they're going to know it from the aspect of, oh, I better give more to my wife. They're not going to look at it like, oh, my wife better be a better receiver. So if you share it with them, that's what they're going to demand of you. And it's much better for us as women to grow 
at our own pace and what works for us. You know, because there'll be times when you don't want to receive, he'll bring the ketchup and you'll be a million other things be flying. And you'll just say, why did you bring that brand of ketchup? And if he knows that you should have just accepted everything he gave him, It'll put pressure, undue pressure on you and you'll feel badly. Whereas if he doesn't know that and you behave badly, you can just later say, I'm, I'm sorry, who cares what brand of ketchup? You know, I mean, I shouldn't care. I care in the future. So don't do it. <laughs> don't do that one wrong. Don't bring the, the not the right brand in the future. But, you know, um, uh, it just takes all the pressure off. So and that's very, very crucial to our being able to grow ourselves to reach our shlames, our, our perfection in the world. Okay. Questions are fabulous, guys. Yes, you know this one is a hard one to swallow. We're getting another one from Esty saying, a woman carries the amount of blessings that comes into our home all on her shoulders. Like she just wants to clarify, that's what you're saying, right? It's all on the woman's shoulders for her to get the blessing. All on what? Uh, meaning, meaning she can't access any of the blessing that's stored unless she receives from her husband so if she's not receiving she's not getting any blessing so it's all on her shoulders to receive get that blessing is that what we're 100%. saying the blessing cannot come into the home without the husband being the conduit for all the blessing okay it cannot come into the home and it cannot come to the home if she blocks his blessing it will not come um, home into the, uh, to their home either. So in other words, if he's trying to, he's got all this blessing and his hands are full of all this blessing, whatever, and she's not receiving, he can't like sneak it into the kids. He can't like, you know, get it into the it, you know, the back of the laundry the room, you know, into the, the washing machine. No, it, it cannot come in unless he gives it to her and she actualizes it much, much like she, he can't bring a bag of flour home and feed it to the children. You know, they're like, dad, what? Is, you know, he has to give it to the wife who makes the challah, you know, the, the wife actualizes the blessing into, uh, into the home. And so it's a partnership there, but it cannot come through uh, uh, the husband unless the wife's receiving it. And we're wor working with you ladies. And so I'm teaching you how to bring more bracha into your home and exactly how to do that. And it's through appreciation and thanking and so far we'll get into it more. Okay, go ahead. What's the next question? So it sounds like rather than saying it's all on her shoulders, is that she holds the key to accessing it. Would that be? Uh, yeah, yeah, correct. Very good point. Yes. Okay. Okay. We have from Gila. Does this concept apply to individuals as well? That we should all work on trying to open ourselves up to become larger ves vessels to receive more bracha from Hashem? Maybe singles would benefit from this idea in terms of finding their mashir. Oh, that's a good question. So a woman, um, a woman uh, opening up to receiving, you know, I mean, I guess it's, it wouldn't be a bad idea to start training ourselves if you're a single person to start training yourself to receiving. So if, if your mom gives you something and it's not exactly your taste, you know, how to receive it in a way that you either tell it to and then why you pick out the ugliest thing? That would be not such a great receiver. Whereas if you say, oh, the thought is so nice, but I just purple and green and orange and polka dots and stripes just don't do it for me, you know, but it was so thoughtful, you know, how to receive and how to, you know, deal with your mom. So yeah, I would say that being a receiver, learning to be a receiver and training yourself to be receivers, probably a good idea. The, I've asked many Rebbeim, how does a, a single person bring bracha into their home? How does a divorced woman bring bracha into their home? It's so complicated. It's like way above my pay scale. I've got answers of, well, you know, the, she's, um, uh, it's her future Besheret that is bringing the bracha that, you know, whatever. I've gotten the answers that that it's sitting in abeyance in Shemayim for her. I, I, that's above my pay grade. However, um, it couldn't be a bad thing to tr start begin training ourselves to be a receiver. I, I, I kind of like that idea. That's good. Okay, good. Next question. And then okay. we've got time for one last question. Okay, great. So Tamima says, is this idea about accepting my husband's generosity towards me? Like the more I accept his gifts, his help, his love, the more will come. Sometimes I feel like my husband spends too much on me, honestly, and I wish he would be a little more frugal. I know this might sound ridiculous. <laughs> Wow. Very honest to me, Mom. 
<laughs> yeah, very good. No, so to me, it's it's right. Um, I know I have a lot of women. I have a woman who said my husband brought home a big tray of steaks and I chastised him like we're, you know, we're trying to cut back the budget and I'm being super careful over here and, and whatever. You should know that if your husband brings home steaks and it's out of the budget, unless he's thoroughly reckless and you're in big dire straits. And then you, that's a whole other conversation. You need to, you know, maybe bring a rabbi in or a therapist or somebody. And, you know, that's a whole other um, uh, problem that's bigger than this. But for the most part, women feel queasy when their husband spends a lot of money on them. And women just have to know that it's almost like um, whatever their husband gives them, God will help. You know, if he goes out and buys you uh, something, you know, the, a tray of steaks and you're just like, whatever, you're receiving it with a uh, kind heart and with a welcoming heart. And, oh, that was so nice of you. I feel a little guilty about it. Are you sure we're okay? You know, whatever, but I'm so happy. I love steaks. I know you love steaks. Um, how a woman receives, even if the husband is being responsible, will do two things. Number one, it will help him to become more responsible because he realizes he can do what he wants. And then it kind of puts the power and control on him. Otherwise it becomes a control issue that, you know, she's not letting me and I mean, you know, she's controlling my budget, what I can spend. So first of all, it'll, it will give empower him to be more careful. And the second thing it will do is he will have that joy of purely giving to you with no, you know, um, uh, with no restraints on it. And that is a level of satisfaction. When a man feels that level of satisfaction, he wants to give more, first of all. Second of all, he wants to meet your needs. And third of all, he it, it's a a a um it's a flow. It gets the flow going from Shemayim through the husband and to the wife. And that's where the bracha, where the source of bracha is and where more bracha is available. So push yourself. If he bought you a twenty thousand dollar diamond ring and you're like, uh, we're in debt and we need our car is run out of battery, you know, doesn't work or whatever, uh, you know, you have to measure that and you have to figure out how you're going to handle it. But if it's within, you know, a little bit of reason, he spent three hundred dollars on something and you, that's sort of affordable, not great, but affordable. Just welcome it with open arms. Okay. This is Larry Rich Emmer for the Ladies Talk Show. Thank you for joining us. And this is this, these concepts you will see when you start to live with these day in, day out, please God, more bracha, it's guaranteed, more bracha will come into your home and you can witness it. Not every time, but many, many times. Okay. Try this at home. One time this week, when your husband gives something to you, regardless of whether it is, whether it's material, whether it's a compliment, whether it's he did something for you, whenever he's doing something that can be constituted as giving, thank him with a whole heart from the bottom of your toes all the way up. Thank you. I'm so grateful. You know, you don't have to be crazy, but, you know, really thank him. Or if you think that's too much, just say, oh, thanks. And then a little bit later say, you know, I was thinking that was so nice of you to bring those steaks or whatever. Just your job, the homework for this week is one time to thank him with a full, genuine heart. Okay, we'll see you next time. Slay Leah Richheimer for the Ladies Talk Show.